Hi everyone. A uh, recent request was for a video to focus on how I draw cat's eyes. I do have a video planned in January where I will focus on a domestic cat's eyes, but for now I thought I'd share how I tackled these cheetah's eyes. The reason why I've decided to make a new video in January is because I've recently finished a cat commission and that cat had beautiful eyes and I'll actually be able to put in the corner the reference photograph, a close up of the cat's eye so you can actually see what I'm working on and the reference photo that I've got. Whereas for this cheetahs, because I actually purchased the various photos I used to create this portrait from wildlife reference photos, I can't share that with you because obviously you've got to buy that in order to use it. So regardless of what I am drawing, I always tend to start with the outside first, blocking in the basic shape to make sure that obviously you don't lose that. I won't leave this pure black at this stage. This is just a blocking in process. It's Like I say, it's just so you get the main shape in. I then, later on in the video, you'll see I'll add some blues, greys, purples, capturing the highlights that you'll often see around the eye. And it's details like this, paying really close attention to your reference photo, which will make your, your eye, your, your portrait as a whole, that much more realistic. I think I must be sharpening a pencil here. And then what I do after this is I then block in where the pupil is. And that's just so that you make sure you focus on where that pupil is, because obviously that will make a difference as to where the animal is looking. Now I'm using a Carbofello, an orange colour, just to apply a base. And then I go in with a Pit Pastel pencil afterwards, which is a, just a that much more vibrant orange, because these cheetah's eyes were capturing a lot of colour. They were very, very rich in colour, very deep. So now I'm applying a shadow to the edge because you want to make sure that you capture that 3D effect of the eye. If you were to leave it all orange and one colour, the eye would look flat. And as you know, an eye is round. So adding these shadows on the edge is what will create that 3D ball effect. Here I've got some glassine across here which I'm re resting my hand on to make sure I don't get any oils of my hand on the paper. Now I'm using some Pit Pastel pencils and that's just a slightly lighter shade of orange. It's really, really subtle these layers that I'm adding and as you can see there I'm using the pencils themselves to blend. I'm not using my fingers, I'm not using any blending stumps, it's just the pencils. Creating a really subtle transition in colour. This is a slightly darker orange now using just my Pit Pastel pencils and my Carbofellows for this. And I'm just reinforcing that shadow. I'm not just using pure browns. This is now a dark red. And around the pupil of these cheetah's eyes, it wasn't the pupil and then the orange starts straight away. There was a transition colour. So this is where I'm adding the browns and the darker reds so that you can still capture that black pupil but you you make sure that you add that darker colour in the edge as it fades out into the colour of the eye. Add in some more darks, just paying really close attention to where these colours are on your reference photo. This is a Derwent pastel pencil here that I'm using here just to add some highlights. This is all a layering process. Each layer you add is slightly lighter than the layer before. And the Derwent Pastel Pencils, because they are soft, they, lap, they overlap really, really well. So what I'm doing now, I'm using a Carbofello pencil here and I'm just adding some blue and purple, which is just some colour, which is obviously picking up from the surrounding sky and creating that highlight in, in this eye. Now this eye doesn't have a pure white highlight, which you'd sometimes do see in eyes. Because of the way the cheetah's looking, it's in shadow, it, it's cast over, the light isn't hitting this eye directly. So there isn't that bright white highlight to capture here. It's more of a subtle blues, a bit of purple on the, pu on the pupil of the eye, and then some greys. So now I'm going in with a lighter yellow, making sure that I'm drawing the pattern of the eye because it's some eyes you've got some straight, they look like straighter lines. This was more of a dappled type effect. So it's important to capture that to make sure you, you 
capture that animal's eye as it is. Don't draw detail that is not there based on other eyes that you might have drawn previously. Here's another Derwent pastel. I'm just softening off these edges, blending them in gradually. This is back with a dark red now. And as you can see, I'm using loads of colours. This eye is not that big. If you look at the size difference compared to the end of the pencil, that it's not big, but you still need to try and add as much detail as you can. And the more colours and tones that you can replicate from the photo is what will make them that much more realistic. Reinforcing the pupil there so that you don't lose that basic shape. And some of these details are hardly even noticeable, but it just makes sure that no one part of the eye is flat. So that pencil I used there was the Karen Diosh, the black, just because it's that much more black. And this is the Rembrandt black pastel because they are, it is black. So I want these edges of this eye to be really crisp, as dark as I can get. And the soft pastel sticks, because they have that much more pigment, they do this perfectly. Just using a black there to soften it out. It's quite fiddly to use a pastel stick for this soft area, so it's important if you can to try and get a, a chiselled edge on the soft pastel sticks. So now I'm adding in some subtle mid-tones, some details in within the eye with this Carbophello pencil here. Really, really subtle. And you don't want to add the brightest details first. Work with the darker layers and build on top because if you put the white down first, the white is what is reflecting most of the light, but the white is quite often on an already mid-tone area. Just like this bit that I've added here, I'm now softening that in so that it goes from black gradually down into a mid-tone and then you'll see you can then put a highlight on this mid-tone to create three levels. It goes from dark, mid-tone to light and that is what your aim would be right here just where I've added that ever so slightly lighter grey sort of three different levels and then if there was a really bright white highlight here that's when you would add it once you've added your mid-tones you then put that spot of white to create that really strong highlight where it's just catching the light if the eye that you're using was to have that again as I say this eye here was more in shadow because of how the cheetah was looking and it was resting against the cheetah cub's head so there isn't going to be as much reflection here. Now this, at this stage, now that I've done the dappled effect, which I noticed a bit further at the back of the, the previous layers of detail, I'm now adding some lighter yellow in those straight lines that I mentioned. So it's almost noticing the different textured layers that each eye or whatever you're drawing has. And in my video that I'm going to make in January, which is of a domestic cat, you'll have the photo in the corner. So you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly um, about these different details that I'm drawing and why I layer them in that way. Basically, these yellow lines that I've just added into this eye was what I noticed first, which means it's what you have to draw last. Because they are the brightest and the most brightest detail, draw them in last. Otherwise, you're trying to draw your darker colours around it and it just it, it, you make the life so much harder. So this eye now is pretty much 80% done. So what I then do is I then make a start on the other eye. And then once they're both in, I can tweak them as I, as I need to. Also, once I work on the portrait and you've got fur around it in, you may notice that bits need to be tweaked, which is why I always say I get things 80% done and then go on um, to my other parts of the portrait and then work back if I need to. And this is very much the same process as the first eye. This eye is catching that much more light, so there's going to be more reflections there. There's a, a brighter highlight to capture in the middle of the eye as well. Adding the pupil in, like I say, just so you, that you don't lose the, the pose, the position. I add my whitest highlight in there and that's purely so I don't mud up the paper. 
that is my brightest part of the portrait in that part of the eye. So you want to make sure by adding that white first and working around it, it will be as white as you possibly can get it. Again, adding my oranges as the base tones, just like I did on the eye before. This is a dark red now, building in that transition from the pupil to the coloured part of the eye. Blending it out with another orange. Reinforcing the black pupil because what will happen is you'll push some of that pastel pigment up over, the, over that darker area. So you just want to reinforce it. And then I'm now working on creating that 3D effect of the eye by putting this shadow along the edge. There was many different colours that I used for these eyes because they were so vibrant. It was actually the colour of the eyes that made me decide the colour of the background. So you'll notice on that first photo at the beginning of the video, the the background was a lot of yellows and subtle oranges and some browns and that is why I made that background that colour to complement the eyes because it's the eyes that I, I that you notice first on this portrait they the vibrancy the colour and the intense the look that both of them have so the I wanted to incorporate some of these colours into the background so it's very repetitive as you see I'm reinforcing these darker areas creating that 3D ball effect, which is what you want. You don't want it to look flat. And all these layers are in preparation for this layer now, where you can then start to add your lighter layers on top, which is adding that much more detail. And here I'm adding some reflective blue, obviously just there reflecting some color from the sky. It's very subtle, but it's there. And it's these little colour differences and these details which will make all the difference. So the white that I used for creating that there was the Derwent white, and which is just what I'm using here now. And then towards the end, I'll actually use my the Karen Diosh white, Chinese white pastel pencil, because that is much softer, so it's, it's that much more whiter. And here I'm adding a light grey. It's almost like a grey blue. And it's just because to, there was a, a subtle highlight, a reflective highlight between that brightest highlight there to the pupil. Starting to add some texture here. And if you do a wrong layer, you put something in that's not right, it really doesn't matter. Pick up another pencil that's more of your mid-tone colour and go over it. They blend out so nicely. Pastel matte is very, very forgiving. This is a lighter yellow. Add in some of these subtle details in now. And as I say, because of the size, there wasn't... A huge amount of room for fitting detail but you can still fit plenty in get your pencils sharp and that will help to keep all these details crisp and it looks like a lot of fiddling and you can see just how much you might put in a detail and then you change it it's not quite right there I was softening that reflective um, highlight there I was softening I didn't like how sharp it was and here there's just an ever so slight, really, really slight highlight on the pupil. And now I'm going to start adding in some of these highlights and details on the darkest part of the eye. And as I say, this did capture that much more reflectiveness on the darkest part of the eye because it was that much more in in the light this is a carver fellow which are really nice to work with they're one of my favorite brands and again there i did a line and i didn't like it so i went back over with the black and i raised it as such went over it and then added an, added a, another detail so quite a lot of purples in this part of the eye so you can see there that i was using here a light purple 
and it's really important which is why you saw me get that black pastel pencil and, and go over it because I didn't get the angle of this line right I made it too narrow which changed the structure of the eye so it's really important if you put that detail down just go over it like I did there with the dark and correct it because these highlights they're not random they are actually structural parts of the eyelid so it's important to make sure that these reflective parts here are captured properly really really sharp pencil for these details here reinforcing that white highlight there added some blue just pay really close attention to your reference photo there are usually so many colors black really reflects uh, and, and picks up some nice colors so you wouldn't you wouldn't want to leave these areas just pure black and like I say the video in January I'll have the photo in the corner so you'll be able to see these details that I'm adding I hope the video was of use. Um, here is a few different work in progress photos that I took, which I posted on my social media. And you can just see how vibrant the eyes are by layering the colour in that way, building from your darker tones to your lighter tones. You can create something which they, they look like they're glowing. And that's just how I wanted it to be. I wanted to capture that intensity of colour. So I tackled the cheetah cubs eyes in exactly the same way as I have with the adults. So just follow the same processes that how you layer from dark to light, adding your highlights in um, and each detail and each layer you add is one step further to achieving a more detailed, realistic look. Pop any suggestions in the comments below if there's any topics that you'd like me to cover in future videos. Um, and don't forget, subscribe, like the video, hit the bell button, and then you'll get notified of future content. My next video will be uploaded on Saturday. Bye!